In the era when black and white tales danced across screens and the scent of nostalgia lingered in the air, there existed a television series that transcended time, etching its narrative into the fabric of popular culture. Cast your mind back to that first encounter with the 1951 classic, Dragnet. As the flickering images painted a world of crime and justice, did you find yourself drawn into the enigmatic allure of Detective Joe Friday's trenchant demeanor? Or perhaps your memory is awash with the rhythmic cadence of his infamous line, Just the facts, Mom. With each episode, the world of Dragnet unveiled its intricate tapestry, woven with threads of suspense, moral quandaries, and the relentless pursuit of truth. The echoes of footfalls in dimly lit alleys, the pulsating notes of a jazzy score, and the resonant voiceover that guided you through the underbelly of the city, these were the elements that wove the show's unique spell. And as you embarked on each investigation alongside Friday and his steadfast partner, did your own sense of justice awaken, igniting a desire to decipher the shades of grey within the black and white frames. But let us delve beyond the surface, into the shadows that breathe life into trivia. Did you know that Dragnet was not merely a show, but a narrative experiment? A melding of reality and fiction, where real-life cases were reconstructed to create a tapestry of authenticity that drew viewers deeper into its clutches. This interplay of fact and fiction gave birth to an immersive experience that continues to captivate minds even decades later. As we journey back to those days, let us unravel more curiosities about this captivating series, exploring the artistry of its storytelling, the legacy it left behind, and the indelible mark it etched upon the annals of television history. So, let the curtain rise on a panorama of facts, anecdotes, and revelations about Dragnet, reminding us all that some tales, even in their monochrome splendor, can stand the test of time. Raymond Burr's portrayal of LAPD Chief Thad Brown lent an air of authenticity to the 1951 TV series Dragnet. Known for his meticulous attention to detail, Burr's embodiment of the real-life figure added gravitas to the show's crime-solving narrative. Brown's presence, both in character and in reality, served as a focal point that anchored the series in the world of law enforcement. However, the show faced its own unique challenges. During its second season, Dragnet underwent a scheduling shuffle due to the untimely passing of Barton Yarborough, the original actor portraying Friday's partner, Ben Romero. Yarborough's death necessitated several cast changes, ultimately leading to Ben Alexander stepping into the role of Friday's new partner, Frank Smith. This transition created a formidable strain on the production timeline, prompting the show to air on alternate weeks as the team navigated the adjustments. For a time, the TV series and radio program ran concurrently. The convergence of these two formats allowed Dragnet to extend its narrative reach, captivating audiences through multiple channels. This dual approach fostered a broader fan base, further solidifying the show's place in the annals of classic television. In the ever-evolving landscape of 1950s entertainment, Dragnet managed to adapt and flourish despite the challenges it encountered. Raymond Burr's portrayal, the reshuffling of its cast, and the concurrent broadcast of radio and TV formats collectively contributed to the enduring legacy of this iconic police procedural series. Through these trials, Dragnet not only upheld its commitment to authenticity but also paved the way for future crime dramas to follow in its footsteps. The Big Title Twist, unveiling Dragnet's alternate identity in the annals of classic television. Few series have left an indelible mark like the 1951 hit, Dragnet. As viewers tuned in week after week to witness the gritty investigations of Detective Joe Friday and his unwavering pursuit of justice, the show's popularity soared. Yet, nestled within its enduring legacy lies a fascinating tidbit that often goes unnoticed, the series' alternate moniker, Badge 714. During the nascent years of television, syndication posed a unique challenge for producers. Rerunning episodes demanded a distinct approach, prompting the showrunners of Dragnet to adopt the alias Badge 714 for its syndicated iterations. This subtle transformation allowed reruns to stand apart from their original airings, a strategy not unlike that of The Andy Griffith Show, which rebranded as Andy of Mayberry in syndication. Interestingly, this covert alter ego lives on in the digital age, embedded within DVD releases of the series. Episodes bearing the badge 714 insignia continue to captivate modern audiences, bridging the gap between eras and offering a glimpse into the art of television evolution. In the grand tapestry of television history, the rechristening of Dragnet as Badge 714 represents an intriguing chapter, a testament to the innovative measures that creators undertook to navigate the intricate realm of syndication. So, as the credits roll on each episode, let us remember the dual identity of this iconic show, a badge of honor worn not only by detectives on screen but also by the series itself. 1951 TV series Dragnet, 
Unveiling the untold hit singles in the summer of 1953, the airwaves were electrified by the resonant echoes of Dragnet, a television series that had already captured the hearts of millions with its signature blend of gritty crime drama. But what many may not realize is that this iconic show didn't just make waves on screen, it also spawned two million selling hit singles, leaving an indelible mark on the music industry. The series' theme music, aptly titled Dragnet, was given a vibrant, swinging rendition by Ray Anthony and his orchestra. This catchy tune not only resonated with fans of the show but also found its way onto the charts, climbing all the way to the coveted one spot. Its unmistakable brass tones and driving rhythm mirrored the pulse of the show's investigations, and listeners couldn't help but tap their feet to its infectious beat. However, the musical surprises didn't end there. Amidst the orchestral fanfare, a different kind of hit emerged, one that took an unexpected turn into satire. Comedian Stan Freberg, alongside his co-writer Dawes Butler and the talented June Foray, crafted a witty and irreverent gem titled St. George and the Dragonette. This three-minute spoken word masterpiece playfully skewered the tone of Dragnet, offering a comedic take on the relentless pursuit of justice. Intriguingly, these musical accomplishments went hand-in-hand -hand with the show's narrative. The series followed the meticulous investigations led by Sergeant Joe Friday, portrayed by Jack Webb, as he doggedly pursued the truth while adhering to the famous catchphrase, Just the facts, Mom. Yet, here's where history takes an unexpected turn. Contrary to popular belief, Friday never uttered the precise words, Just the facts, Mom. The actual line he used was, all we want are the facts, mom. This subtle distinction might seem trivial, but it's a testament to the power of iconic phrases and their lasting impact. As the years rolled on, Dragnet left its mark not only on television history but also on the music charts. From the soul-stirring theme by Ray Anthony to the light-hearted parody by Stan Freberg, the series proved its ability to resonate across mediums and evoke emotions ranging from suspense to laughter. So next time the echoes of Dragnet reach your ears, remember that it wasn't just a television show, it was a cultural touchstone that left an unexpected musical legacy in its wake. The badge unveiled, untold stories from Dragnet's dark corner and a groundbreaking revelation. It emerges that Jack Webb, the mastermind behind the 1951 TV series Dragnet, unleashed a trove of untold narratives in a book titled The Badge. These narratives, deemed too contentious for television's cautious embrace, delve into a shadowed realm of violent murder, rape, and child molestation. While the series often veiled such subjects to meet broadcast standards, the badge lays bare the unvarnished truths. Webb's audacious literary endeavor dares to explore the sinister underbelly of crime that the series merely grazed upon. A trailblazing endeavor, the stories showcased within the badge traverse the darker corners of human behavior, grappling with subjects that the small screen dared not fully confront. A disquieting reminder that reality often eclipses fiction, the narratives in the badge echo the unsettling nature of a world just beyond our gaze. Diverging from conventional narrative boundaries, the badge strikes a chord of contemplation and controversy, prompting us to question the limits of storytelling and societal norms. These stories, untamed by television's constraints, unveil a side of Dragnet that once remained hidden. The book stands as a testament to Jack Webb's artistic vision, resolute in its commitment to authenticity, even when that authenticity is stark, disconcerting, and unflinchingly raw. The revelation of the badge adds a riveting chapter to the legacy of Dragnet, casting a new light on the series' impact and the boundaries it straddled. Webb's bold step offers a rare glimpse into the convergence of art and reality, as he transgresses the boundaries of propriety in pursuit of a more unvarnished narrative. The publication reignites conversations about the balance between creative expression and societal responsibility, resonating as powerfully now as it did then. Indeed, the badge is a reminder that storytelling can be as much about what we choose to keep in shadow as what we choose to illuminate. It encapsulates the tension between the desire for truth and the comfort of constraint, a tension that continues to shape the ever-evolving landscape of television and literature. So it is that the badge rekindles our fascination with the enigmatic allure of Dragnet, prompting us to revisit the show's legacy through a fresh, unfiltered lens. As we contemplate the narratives that could have been, we are drawn into a world where the contours of reality are as compelling as any fictional tale. For Jack Webb, the badge was not just a book, it was a statement, a confrontation with the edges of our comfort zones, a revelation of stories silenced by the constraints of their time. It stands as a testament to the power of narrative to both challenge and captivate, to shock and to illuminate. The legacy of Dragnet lives on, forever intertwined with the stories that dare to push the boundaries, the narratives that remain too potent for the small screen, and the unyielding spirit of a creator who refused to be confined by convention. In the annals of television history, the badge secures its place as a singular testament to the complexities of storytelling, reminding us that even in the polished world of entertainment, the rawest truths often lie just beneath the surface. And so, the revelations of the badge serve as a haunting echo, a reminder that the shadows hold stories untold, waiting for those brave enough to shine a light. 
As we wrap up this journey down memory lane, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on the subtle threads that connect us to the past. Those moments of shared suspense and unspoken camaraderie that the 1951 TV series Dragnet effortlessly wove into our lives. Whether it was the distinct sound of that opening theme, the iconic dun-dun echoing in the back of your mind, or the unforgettable characters who etched themselves into the annals of television history, Dragnet wasn't just a show, it was a touchstone. Perhaps you remember sitting around the television with your family, the soft glow illuminating eager faces, all united by the anticipation of what Friday and Smith would uncover next. Maybe you found yourself inspired by their dogged determination to uphold justice, fostering a sense of duty in your own heart. Or perhaps you simply reveled in the nostalgia of a bygone era, where the city's pulse was captured in every black and white frame. As you've walked alongside these detectives, you've absorbed a piece of their world, the tension, the drama, the morals that made you question right from wrong. And now, as you contemplate your personal connection with Dragnet, I invite you to share your treasured memories and reflections. Whether it's a favorite episode that never fails to stir emotion or a character whose quirks still bring a smile to your face, your experiences breathe life into the legacy of Dragnet. Thank you for indulging in this journey, for keeping the spirit of a timeless classic alive through your recollections and sentiments. It's through the collective memories of individuals like you that the resonance of Dragnet endures, reminding us all that the past can be as vibrant as the present. So, take a moment to share your thoughts and stories. The virtual fireplace is now open for your tales of mystery, camaraderie, and the enduring allure of Dragnet. Until we meet again, stay curious and keep those memories alive. Warmest regards, your name.